Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Sandy's Lunchtime Chat. Today is we're going to talk about the emotional roller coaster. The emotional roller coaster when care partners become caregivers. Throughout my presentation today, I will switch back and forth from addressing you, the person living with Parkinson's, to you, the care partner. Because never is the statement, Parkinson's is a family affair, more true than when your roles in each other's lives begin to change. These changes in your roles and in your relationships are inevitable when you are dealing with a chronic condition that slowly but surely gets worse over time. And the more you are prepared for the changes you know you might face, the easier things will be for both of you in the long run. Because you will have planned ahead and the easier it will be to stay the course when things get tough. I'm sure I will say some things to you today that you don't want to hear. And certainly, not everything I say will apply to every one of you. I just want to share some of the things I've learned from many of you over the years, with the hope of helping you to recognize the need for change, seeing your relationships in a new light, and making the best of it. So, have your tickets ready, all aboard for the emotional roller coaster for the ride from being partners in care to being care recipients and caregivers. Quoting a colleague in the field of caregiving, Rosalind Carter, the wife of the previous um, President of the United States, once said in, a, uh, in an introduction to her audience, there are only four kinds of people in this world. Those who have been caregivers, those who currently are caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who will need caregivers. I think that pretty much covers all of it, wouldn't you? All of us, wouldn't you say? Last August, in my lunchtime chat, I also dealt with the emotional roller coaster of Parkinson's, giving you the normal range of emotions that people with Parkinson's as well as care partners go through after hearing your doctor say, you have Parkinson's, such as disbelief, anger, worry, fear, bargaining, depression, and finally, acceptance. By now, Many of you will have gone through these emotions several times over the many years that you have had Parkinson's, as you have been forced to face various challenges. No sooner do you find ways of coping with one new challenge than another issue comes along, and you have to start on that roller coaster ride of ups and downs all over again. At the beginning, these changes and challenges are insidious. They kind of creep up on you when you're not looking, and in that way, they give you time to adapt and adjust to what is going on. One such example of an insidious change I heard about many years ago from a volunteer with Parkinson's that I had the privilege of working with goes like this. This lady had been an excellent downhill skier, but as her Parkinson's progressed, and her reflexes and balance were both compromised, etc., she had to give up downhill skiing. So she went to, at that time, the next best thing, after going through all of the emotions that I mentioned earlier, disbelief, anger, depression. And when she got to the acceptance stage, she realized that she didn't have to give up skiing altogether. She changed to cross-country skiing. And, again, after realizing that she could no longer do that safely, she again went through all of those emotions I've just mentioned, disbelief, anger, depression, and again when she got the, to the acceptance skate stage, realizing she had to give up cross-country skiing, she learned to snowshoe. 
nothing was going to keep her from enjoying her love of her winter sports. What I want to talk to you about today is another type of change and challenge many of you will have to face eventually, and one some of you will already have had to deal with. As your Parkinson's progresses, the day may come, most likely possibly following a fall and maybe a fracture or pneumonia that requires hospitalization, when you realize that you need more hands-on direct care. This transition, unlike many of the previous ones that you've already experienced, is usually very sudden giving you little time to adapt and adjust to your new role, as well as the new role that you, the care partner, find yourself in. It seems like one day your loved one is managing fairly well, and the next day you suddenly need to intervene. The need to step in can really sneak up on you. I want to start now by focusing on you, the primary caregiver. As more often than not, you get left out of decisions and conversations, and everyone focuses on your loved ones with Parkinson's. The reality is that as your partner's PD progresses, you will probably face some tough challenges, like having to persuade him or her to give up driving, or acknowledging that he or she is showing more and more signs of cognitive impairment that can impact safety. Such challenges seem more difficult because you've both been living with PD for a number of years, and what are obvious symptoms that PD is getting worse are most likely not going to be obvious to the person with Parkinson's, which of course will add a great deal of stress and conflict to your relationship. As difficult as it may seem, it is important to acknowledge changes as they come and seek the advice of the neurologist if you notice any unusual progression, such as hallucinations and delusions, sleep disturbances, in particular things with sleep like shouting or punching, getting out of bed while your loved one is still asleep, or rapid deterioration in your loved one's ability to move as these symptoms are all treatable, but if left untreated, they will severely diminish both of your quality of life. Let your doctor know if you are concerned about your loved one's ability to drive, and don't try to deal with this very contentious issue all by yourself, especially if it starts an argument when you bring it up, as it often does. This is one of the most common areas of contention between people with Parkinson's and their loved ones, and I have seen it absolutely ruin relationships. There is nothing that you, the care partner, can do to stop your loved one from driving other than having the car towed away or trying to hide those car keys. So tell the doctor who, in turn, will inform the Ministry of Transport. The good news is that there is going to be a webinar on Parkinson's and driving during one of the uh, lunchtime sessions during the year. Keep your eyes and ears open for that one. I know it will be an important topic for many of you. I know that you caregivers have heard this time and time again, but I need to emphasize it again today because experience tells me that time and time again, most of you don't even heed this warning. You are in danger of burning out. Attending to your needs for regular short-term breaks and an occasional long-term respite break are the keys to keep on keeping on. Plan for breaks and consider them as vital for you as for your Parkinson's uh, partner's timely medications are for him or her. Again, I will say that again. Plan for breaks and consider your breaks as vital for you as your partner's, 
partner's timing of their medications are to him or her. It is just that important. Part of being prepared to cope with the challenges of advancing Parkinson's is to discuss some difficult decisions, such as what to do if symptoms such as psychosis appear, or again, what to do if driving becomes an issue, preparing for a change in living accommodations, your need for periodic breaks, so again, that you can keep on keeping on. Your partner, that's those of you with Parkinson's who are listening, now needs to accept and appreciate that you are simply carrying out the decisions that both of you made months or even years ago about dealing with what to do when Parkinson's progresses. If, by chance, your partner is now incapable of understanding or appreciating that fact, Remind yourself that those decisions were made while he or she was still in control. You need to remember, having made the choices together as partners, you are now simply carrying out his or her wishes. I'm sure many of you caregivers are saying, Sure, Sandy, easy for you to say. And I agree. At the present time, I'm not facing the problems you are dealing with. I'm just trying to help you look at things a little bit differently. So, up until now, many of you have been partners on your Parkinson's journey. And that can both be good news as well as bad news. The good news is that your care partner is the most likely candidate to become your primary caregiver. Now I'm speaking to you folks with Parkinson's. And he or she, your care partner, is very familiar with you and the path your Parkinson's has taken. The bad news is that you, the person with Parkinson's, has gotten pretty used to being in charge, the one everyone has focused on, the one everyone has paid attention to up until now. Not only will handing off that control take some adjustment, you will also have to accept the fact that decisions that once focused on your needs now need to transition to include your care partner's needs so that they will have the ability and emotional strength to deliver what you need when you need it without completely sacrificing his or her normal routine. This is one of those tough love moments I referred to at the beginning of my chat with you today. Remember the things I told you that you may not want to hear, but I'm going to say it, and I'm hoping you folks out there with Parkinson's will not just listen to what I say, but really hear the point I'm trying to make. Your caregiver isn't the person with Parkinson's. Life will go on for this person. Often the time for giving care has passed. And he or she deserves to attend to that life while still attending to your needs. As your relationship adjusts to a new balance of roles, remember that this is the same person who has been right there with you as your partner since your Parkinson's journey began. Never will it be more tempting to give in to the anger and resentment that this widening chasm can create. And never will your care partner, turned caregiver, need your love, appreciation, and emotional support more. If you think for one minute that it is easy for your care partner to watch your progression preserve your dignity, and treat you with respect each and every day, then think again. Your challenges are their challenges too. And at, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, a very important element of your relationship as partners remains throughout your journey and is woven like an infinite thread 
throughout the fabric that has bound you together all these years in your battles with Parkinson's. This is the fact that if you and your partner have prepared for this day, discussed the different decisions that you knew you might face, and explored options to address your increasing needs, then your partners are simply carrying out the decisions you both made months or even years ago. Regardless of where you are on the continuum of care, whether you just require a bit of help buttoning those pesky buttons or doing up those annoying zippers or need a hand shaving or getting in and out of the shower or whether you need assistance with most or all of your activities of daily living, your care partner is the person who takes primary responsible in providing both home and personal care assistance. This person may also be handling the finances, managing legal affairs, attending to routine chores such as the housework, shopping, laundry, meal preparation, and is often doing all of these things in combination with providing personal care for you. But above all else, this is still your partner, the person you trust to abide by your wishes, the wishes and decisions you made clear in better times, and to speak for you if you are no longer able to speak for yourself. When the transition from partnering to caregiving begins in earnest, you and your partner will need to be ready for the learning curve. Consider these new challenges. Moving from independence to the need for assistance. Rapidly shifting from partner to caregiver, a seemingly full-time job. Moving from blind stubbornness to acceptance. Consciously recognizing the emotional roll call, the ro excuse me, consciously recognizing the emotional roller coaster you've boarded, right when your physical and emotional defenses are already down. So far today, I have focused on just the two of you and how moving from being independent to needing assistance is a very difficult transition for both of you. Just how long the need for care will continue is hard to estimate. It can go on for a few years or possibly even decades, but there is one thing for sure. Neither of you can completely remain independent. At some point, you will have to accept help from others. I can't tell you how many times I have heard things like, my husband or my wife refuses to allow a stranger to provide him or her with personal care. I get that. I absolutely get that. Allowing other people to take care of needs that you once managed is depressing and demoralizing, especially if that person is a stranger who's being paid to deliver a service, and especially if that service is so personal and private that you find it difficult to accept, such as someone, a stranger, bathing you or helping you to go to the washroom. But just stop being so stubborn and think for a minute. Remember, a few minutes ago, I talked about how it's not all about you, the person with Parkinson's, and you, the person with Parkinson's, your needs. Your caregiver has needs too. Two lives are at stake here. Try to accept this help as one way of caring for your partner. Does this service free your partner to attend to some other task or simply enjoy a break? 
Does the help save time that both of you can put to better use? Get over yourself. Yes, you've been dealt a crappy hand, but you're still here. For now, you are blessed to have a life that includes this person who has put her or his life on hold to take this journey with you. I'm just going to take a drink of water. <coughs> Sorry. You have a choice. Live each day being grumpy, thinking about all the problems you may still have to face, or accept the help of others and live each and every day. So back to talking about these difficult decisions I mentioned at the beginning. Talk about issues that can and must change, like accepting help, for example, so you can help your care partner both physically, mentally, as well as spiritually. Human beings are, by nature, fiercely independent, and perhaps never more so than when autonomy is threatened by illness and circumstances beyond their control. There is no shame in accepting the help of other people. In fact, friends, family, extended family, etc., often shy away, even stop visiting, and maybe even stop calling, because they feel helpless. There's nothing they can do to treat the Parkinson's or the progression that makes them feel so uncomfortable. And if you pretend that everything is great and that you can manage it all, you will find yourselves isolated and alone. I don't think that's a place any of you really want to be. Allowing others to provide assistance not only gives you much needed support in preserving your energy to live life as fully as possible for as long as possible, you may not realize it, but you're actually helping them as well. And you enrich their lives by giving them a way to tangibly demonstrate their love and respect for both of you. Think of it this way. Accepting help is a way of taking control as opposed to a sign of failure and weakness. I just want you to think about that for a minute. Accepting help is a way of taking control as opposed to a sign of failure and weakness. Make a list of the things you need help with so that your friends and family can choose what it is that they want to do for you. For example, would you like them to make a meal and deliver a casserole to your door? Or would you like them to sit with your loved one while, you're, while you are out? Or do you need some assistance driving to appointments, etc.? Make a list again giving people the option so they can choose what they would like to do for you. Because people often say, is there anything I can do to help? And your answer should be, yes, I would like you to do the following. Refusing to acknowledge that you need additional help will not only take a toll on your relationship, it may force you into isolation that comes from managing that comes from trying to manage your PD to the exclusion of everything and everyone else, further damaging both your health as well as the health of your care partner. Please, 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 don't be stubborn about this. Life with Parkinson's is hard enough. You need a team of healthcare professionals, families, and friends to fight this battle. Now for those of you who are care partners, I want to spend a few minutes talking about burnout. If both of you were living normal lives, 
Wouldn't you plan regular breaks from, your t from routine? Consider, for example, how most jobs include breaks, holidays, vacation time, and personal days. Why does the job of being a caregiver not come with the same consideration? Just think about that for a minute. For those of you who are caregivers, ask yourself these questions. Is it becoming increasingly difficult for you to face the daily challenges that Parkinson's forces you to cope with? Are you dealing with lack of sleep, under eating or overeating, headaches that simply won't go away, other body aches and pains? Are you often irritable, short-tempered, and impatient with your loved one? Are you feeling isolated, sad, and lonely? Do you sometimes resent your loved one? Or are you resentful of others whose lives have not been impacted by Parkinson's? Do you often think about your friends and think, Gosh, I wish I could do those things. Do you reject suggestions and others' offers of help because you believe other people just don't get it? They haven't been through this, so they can't possibly understand. Do you believe that you and only you alone can do this work? Are you ignoring your personal needs? Are you ignoring your own health care issues and putting them on the back burner because your person with Parkinson's needs you? If you answered yes to two or even more of these questions, then you need to seriously think about burnout. There are numerous books out there that are written for caregivers with a plethora of ideas of how to deal with burnout. I have spoken to hundreds of caregivers over the years, and I have learned that those things, that those individuals who plan for the healing power of rest and relaxation have avoided the damage caused by burnout. What I'm talking about is building regular respite into your routine early on. The operative words here are regular, respite, and early on. Take breaks sooner rather than later. This means planning daily or weekly breaks, as well as occasional but just as regular, longer hiatuses. For example, you should be taking daily short-term respite, and that means getting at least out with two timeouts, time where you can go to somewhere else where you're living, whether it's down to the recreation room in the condo or down to the physical recreation room or even just into a separate room and close the door and have a time out. Take a walk. Take a long, hot bath. Arrange for someone to come and be with your loved one if he or she shouldn't be left on their own. Whatever the respite, plan it, schedule it, and don't cancel it. Weekly breaks may include trips to the beauty salon, card night, choir practice, a movie, line dancing, a club meeting. Support group meetings don't really count because respite means getting away from everything to do with Parkinson's. These breaks are, should be noted on the calendar. They should be carved in stone non-negotiable, that is, except, of course, if your house is on fire. The long hiatus breaks last several days. Periodic trips t 
take careful planning, but they are doable. And I have known many caregivers who are very successful and very healthy and whose relationships have thrived because, and their loved ones have also been enriched because the payoff of respite has been enormous and they have managed to keep on keeping on for the long haul. I mean going away on a vacation, for example, on your own if necessary. Your health, of course, is a huge factor in all of this. I have known many caregivers who have put their health on the back burner and have suffered serious consequences as a result. Taking care of yourself will make a huge difference in your ability to tackle the everyday challenges that Parkinson's forces you to. I started my chat today talking about how the Parkinson's journey is like being on an emotional roller coaster. Because just like a roller coaster, Parkinson's has many ups and downs, unexpected corners that you never know what's going to happen next. We typically go through our lives with a self-image of strength and independence. We can do anything necessary for our families as well as ourselves. Now the tables have turned. What an embarrassment. What a humiliation. But let's face it. We are looking at the, national, at the natural cycle of life. Most people who live long enough will develop some condition later on in life that requires help. Even if you are at the peak of health today, you may still have a fall, especially with icy and snowy conditions. You could break a hip. You could be stuck in a wheelchair. Anything can happen to any of us at any time. We all live our lives as best as we can. But when the time comes for us to get older and develop illnesses, we also need to accept this. By and large, of course, Parkinson's often strikes earlier, and we are often faced with some things that many people don't have to face until later on in life. But again, Regardless of when Parkinson's strikes, you need to accept it. I am often humbled by the love stories I have been privileged to witness in my tenure here. Husbands who bring their frail Parkinson wives to support groups, attending to their every need, and treating them like they were the 16-year-old beauty queens of 60 years ago and wives who fawn over their husbands who have advanced Parkinson's, even though they are no longer the handsome athletes who won their hearts in their youth. It's easy to get caught up in the daunting tasks of being both a care receiver and a caregiver, both relinquishing control and taking control of the things that you never imagined possible. Today, on Valentine's Day, please take some time to reflect on your partnership, and please don't ever lose sight of how you started this journey as partners. We are very aware that Parkinson's changes everything, but it can't change who you were when you started out life's journey together. We make a point of saying, don't let Parkinson's rob you of your identity. You are much more than just a care receiver, a person with Parkinson's, and a caregiver. So, get off that roller coaster. Look back to where you started this ride. And while Parkinson's changes everything, you have a say 
in how you will adapt and adjust to these changes. Next month, we're going to have a webinar on medical marijuana from a doctor in um, uh, Hespler, Ontario, out by Cambridge. So again, the medical marijuana lunchtime chat given by Jonathan Zaid will be on March the 14th at 12 o'clock. Please tune in. And if you want more information about that, join us. The information is on our website. But don't hesitate to give us a call at 1-800-565-3000. Again, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Take care, and bye for now. Go ahead.